Today's case study is from a female subscriber. She got monkey branched on by a narcissistic man. She turned a blind eye to the red flags because she really liked him. Let this be a lesson to all of you. For the women and for the men watching, there is much to learn from her experience. With that said, let's dive right into her email because it's going to be a long one. Now, I'm gonna keep her identity private and refer to her as Jessica. With that said, let's begin. She says, hello, Coach Christian. I found your YouTube channel while trying to deal with my breakup and I thought about telling you my story. I see you usually talk to men, but your advices are useful to women as well. And I don't know if you will read this, but I need to tell someone what happened. Well, about 30% of all of my viewers now are women and I've actually had more and more ladies reach out. So this is great because for the women who are watching, you're going to get to see the dangers of involving yourself with a man who isn't right for you. She says, I'm a Brazilian opera singer and I moved, to, moved alone to Europe around five years ago. After moving from country to country, I ended up in Italy and was waiting for my final residence permit here. I wanted to move out of here and an opportunity came for me to visit Poland. I was doing research for a chopping concert and I fell in love with the country. I wanted to move there. And in this trip, I started meeting guys to talk and see if I could find someone interesting to maybe have a relationship in the future. For those of you who don't know, I'm half Polish. Yeah, Poland is a beautiful place for those of you who have not visited. So she's a Brazilian opera singer. She actually sent me some of her singing and I must say, it's amazing. She's a very talented lady. I also went on a coaching call with her. So I've already given her all the advice she needs but she's kind enough to give me permission to share her story with all of you so that you can learn from what she went through. And she is indeed a very beautiful woman, very elegant, very traditional and feminine and knows exactly what she wants. But she's obviously had some issues, some wounds from her past because she grew up in a very toxic household, which we're gonna get through towards the end. She has a little, little bit of codependency, but she's standing up for herself more, putting her values into place, her standards, you know, very, very beautiful woman, Brazilian, and she has Italian heritage, dark hair, dark eyes, very white skin, like me. Beautiful woman, and quite frankly, any guy who gets to marry her is going to be very lucky. But this goes to show that when a woman, she can have all of it, the beauty, the intelligence, be very feminine, be faithful, but if she doesn't choose a man who's traditional, who's masculine, who's loyal, it ain't gonna work. So let's be a lesson to all the ladies listening. You can't turn a playboy into a husband. The same way a man can't turn a home into a housewife. Choose wisely. So she's come to Europe and then she eventually goes to Poland. This is when she's gonna meet the narcissist. She says, then I met him. He was tall, beautiful, funny, and appeared to be very serious. We spoke about history, values, culture, and we had the same sense of humor. We started meeting every day. He was very respectful and left me at my hotel door always at 10 o'clock at night without ever trying to go up or suggest anything. Now this can be good, but it can also be a decoy because some men know that if they pretend to be traditional and they wait a little bit, pretend to be a gentleman, that the woman will fall for it. Obviously there are cases where the guy actually follows through and he's consistent and he actually he values loyalty he's not there to just have sex he actually wants to get to know and he's courting her properly but most women will see this and go oh he's a good guy he's leaving me at the hotel door he's not trying anything for the ladies listening be very cautious for, especially those of you who are young because some men that manipulate women they use them this is what they do. They will present an image that they're traditional on the outside without having those values in here. Mm -hmm. Traditional values come from faith. So you have to be very careful with this. But on paper, it sounds good. And what did she just say, guys? He was tall, beautiful, and funny. Do looks matter to women? Of course they do. I made a recent video about that, didn't I? Remember, if she didn't find him beautiful and tall, as she says, she wouldn't have wanted to get to know him. The same way you men, 
if you meet a lady and she's not attractive, you're not, you're not even going to be interested enough to have that conversation. So that confirms it, okay? He was beautiful and she liked him. So all in all, looks matter to women as much as they do to men. Continuing on with the email. After a week, he invited me to go with him to a wedding and I accepted. Not too soon for that. It all happened very fast, but I'd noticed the men in Poland were more relationship oriented than in other places I'd been and I thought it was a cultural thing. He said he was a practicing Catholic and wanted to have a family, children, a house close to the woods and this kind of thing. My stay in Poland was prolonged for more than a month and we were meeting every day. He taught me to meet his family and they were very lovely. He lived in Warsaw, but his family lived in a rural area in the east. They are farmers, simple, kind-hearted people, and I was happy to be with them. They love me and I love them. That is a good sign that he comes from a good family because her and I have spoken about this, yet he actually told her that he looked down on his family because they were farmers and he had a university degree, right? So what does that tell you? Bad apple, maybe, but the type of friends he had were guys who were encouraging him with his type of behavior. So remember, the environment he has around him, other than his family, is going to play a massive influence on his character. But regardless, if you've, been, if you've met this guy for a week, he shouldn't be inviting you out to a wedding. Because when you first start courting each other, you want it to be one-on-one, -on -one, somewhere relaxing and quiet. You can sit there and have a coffee, have something to eat and talk, ask quality questions, get to know each other. Have an open line of communication where you can relate and build a bond. That is what you must do. Being invited to a wedding of a friend he has or whatever happens to be, those are things you can do when you're a boyfriend, girlfriend, when you're together, when you're serious. Going to a concert together, going to watch a movie, going on a trip, meeting family and friends. Those are things you can do when you're more serious. But initially, you want it to be one-on-one, -on -one, where there is no third party, there are no loud noises, the distractions in the background. It's just you and him, and you get to talk. Read his body language. Date after date. Repeat back things that he said in the past. Does it match? Does it coincide? Is he saying the truth? Do his words and actions match, or are there inconsistencies? That, those are the things you want to look for. So all of this, he invited me to go out with him to a wedding. That's a little fast too soon. And yeah, he's saying that he's a Catholic. He wants a family and children. Remember, this goes both ways for men and women. This, don't look at what they say. Look at what they do. Trust, but verify. Trust is something that they have to earn. Hmm? If he says that he wants a family, he wants children, then technically speaking, he should be a man that knows exactly what he wants out of life. He has a vision, he has purpose, he has a sense of direction. He knows how to lead you, protect and provide for you. He steers it in that direction. He talks about these things a lot. He mentions them to you. Those are his values, his fundamentals. He's very detailed. Because some guys will fake being traditional to manipulate a woman who is to make her think, oh, he's a good man, he wants these things as well, and then you let your guard down. The same way some women will tell a guy, I'm traditional, I want to be a good woman and, you know, be at home and have a family with you, but really that woman is a gold digger. And she just wants the benefits without actually being a traditional woman herself. Some men like that because they're promiscuous, they sleep around, they have no intention of building a bond, but they want to have the family and the wife at home or they go out there and have their fun because they're immoral. So even if a man tells you these things, as time goes on, see if it really adds up. The same way I've mentioned in the past, when a woman is wife material, those qualities are present from the day one till the day she dies. But ladies, it goes the same way for men. If he really is husband material, if he really is confident, masculine, and is who he says he is, 
It's always going to be that way. He's going to be real. Pay attention to that. Let's continue on. Since I was living in another country, the solution was to bring me to Poland. We would live together in Warsaw, which was kind of fast, but I was already part of the family. Now, me and her spoke about this. She knows that you shouldn't move in until marriage or engagement, yet she did it because of the exception of the residency permit. Regardless, you want to be careful because when you move in and you're not right for each other, you've made a financial investment. You've made a very strong commitment with your time. So what happens now is you're more willing to turn a blind eye to red flags or signs of incompatibility because you've invested so much. And then to walk away now, it's kind of like, it's a waste of time. So you want to just pretend that you didn't see the things that you see that are bad in hopes that maybe things will change in the future. Because you've invested so much, you want it to work out. This is why you must make a decision based on principle, not on feeling. Because there are bad ladies, there are bad men out there who know how to manipulate a girl. They know how to sweet talk her. Remember, men fall in love by what they see, women fall in love by what they hear. And there are guys out there and they will sell you the dream. They will tell you all these things, whisper all these sweet nothings in your ear and you're convinced, wow, he's, he really is this type of man. So then you open up your heart to him and then he hurts you. So you have to be so careful. Actions and words, do they match? Always. Once you have confirmation that he is who he says he is, then you can open up, then you can let go. Because what a woman needs to feel is safety, comfort. Okay, you want to feel protected by him. Let's continue on. So I was already part of the family. Everything was kind of fast. They took me to the day of the dead ceremony. I paid respect to their ancestors. We lighted candles, went to church. And I thought I had so much to learn from them. And I wanted to be the best woman possible to him and to his family. I came back to Italy, stayed for one month, packed everything into boxes and moved to Poland. While I was in Italy, he found an apartment, gave entrance to my residence permit, and he took care of everything. So far, so good. Before that, he was living in a very small room in a dirt house shared with other guys, and all of his house stuff was not comfortable. When I arrived there, I tried to make his life the best possible. I brought comfortable and beautiful stuff to the house. I kept it clean. I cooked for him every day. I woke up early with him to prepare him breakfast before he went to work and the day before I always had food prepared for him to take to eat at lunch. You see what a good woman she is? And this is what women do because men, we're minimalistic. We don't need much. Do I have any, do I have any paintings or things like that? No, it's not necessary. But women come in and because they are the heart of the home, women, when they come into your life, they decorate things, they adorn things. They make things beautiful and homely and this sweet environment for a family. That's what women do. They're caring. They're nurturing. They're submissive. That's in their nature. That's how God made them to be. In the Bible, it says a woman is created to be a man's helpmeet. Even though she herself is already a very successful and talented woman, when she meets a guy that she likes, look at what she does. She's doing everything for him. She's cooking. She's cleaning. She comes into his life. She organizes things. She makes it beautiful. She adorns things, puts all the decorations, makes the house beautiful. She kept it clean, cooked for him every day, prepared food for him in the morning and for lunch. How many of you would like a woman to do that? But remember, for the ladies listening, if that man is not with you for you, if he's not righteous, if he's not traditional, he's never going to appreciate it. He's going to take it for granted. In the meantime, I continued my activities and at the same time dedicated myself to the house and the relationship. Women are relationship oriented and focused. When a woman falls in love with a man and she makes the decision that this is the guy who I'm going to have children with, that's her priority. That's just the way things work naturally. And all you have to do as a man, guys, court your woman, make her feel heard and understood. 
keep focusing on your job, your career as a man, so that you can lead, protect and provide for her. But also make sure you're providing what she needs emotionally. You know how to sit down with her, you give her praise and affection. You give her thanks for all the wonderful things she does for you. Because when you tell a woman that you're grateful, that you're appreciative of the little things she does day in, day out, it's going to encourage, her, it's going to encourage her to do more of that. And she'll open up and give you more love. That's the beautiful thing. You give a woman your seat, she gives you children. You give, you invite her into your house, she creates a home. Because the secret ingredient is love. And a lot of you guys are so damaged that you think women can't love you. But they can. There's good women out there. And this lady here, Jessica, is a perfect example of an honourable woman. Look how virtuous she is. She did everything for him. Okay? I dedicated myself to the house and the relationship. Listen to what she says next. I was so happy. And I thought he was happy too. It makes women happy to do these things for you when they love you, when, when you're the right man for them. He always told everybody with joy about me and he said he would never leave me and that I didn't have to be tough anymore because he would be tough for me and protect me. It's good that he says that, but does he actually follow through? And here come the red flags. Well, oh, this is when it gets good. Number one, I saw Tinder on his phone twice. So he's got a dating app. He gave me some excuses and I let it pass. So on the coaching call I had with her, she told me that they originally met on, on that dating app. And she said immediately when they became serious, she deleted it. And she thought he did the same. Obviously he did. So one time she saw it on his phone, they were on a, on a video call with his family and then the notification popped down. And afterwards she's told him, what's this about? And he said, oh, I forgot to delete it. Is he telling the truth or not? But as she said, I saw Tinder on his phone twice. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So the second time is not an accident. Maybe the first time he was telling the truth and he forgot, which is not real. But if you want to give him that past, mm, you could consider it. Even then it looks iffy. But the second one confirms because then he still had it later. They were on a trip. I believe she said they were on the train or the bus and it came up on his phone. And she's like, why do you still have Tinder? And he went to the bathroom, deleted it and came back and said, what are you talking about? Starts gaslighting her. Narcissistic, huh? Got to be careful ladies with men like this. But again, she found him so attractive and she liked him so much that she turned a blind eye to these things. And for you guys watching, how many of you have done this to a woman? She's so beautiful that you just keep giving a chance after chance. Remember, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. You want to be careful. So he gave me some excuses and I let it pass. The second red flag was this. At the wedding, so as I mentioned earlier, she was invited to a wedding. Um, at the wedding, when I asked how I should dress, he sent me a picture with a girl. He said it was his friend. Men and women can't be friends. But I found out later that it was his ex. What a coincidence. Number three, I saw him texting a girl whose name on his phone was saved as sexy. This is when we had our first huge fight. And this is when you, this is when you should have said, and this story comes to an end and I walked away. This here is where you cut ties with a man. What do I say all the time, ladies and gentlemen? Red flags are always going to be present at the beginning. Whether it's in the first date, first three weeks, first six months. But I can promise you, nobody can ever come to me and tell me, I was married for 10 years and all of a sudden figured out that they weren't right for me. You knew way before you made the ultimate commitment. You knew long before you moved in because these were things she saw early on, but yet she continued. But a lot of men do this too. You turn a blind eye. Look, relationships, you need, yes, physical desire, chemistry. You both find each other attractive. And then you need compatibility, alignment of values, belief system, lifestyle, political views, religious views, views on family, child rearing. Everything needs to be aligned. 
If you don't have that, you can't develop an emotional bond, relate to one another. This is what causes arguments, fighting, and really breaks up the connection. But on the other hand, if you both find each other attractive and everything in terms of compatibility is aligned, but there are red flags, in other words, they're unfaithful, they're promiscuous, they're non-traditional, they have unresolved wounds, they are, they're vain, right? They live the party lifestyle. They're not serious about you. They settle for you. There's an ex in the background. They're addicted to substance abuse, whatever happens to be. If there are red flags, okay, warning signs that this person is not suitable for a long-term commitment and you choose to stay, you're going to get hurt. So you need to make sure that none of that is in the way. You want someone that you find attractive, it's mutual, you're compatible, it's mutual, and that they show you from day one that they're consistent. And if they don't have that, you cannot consider them for marriage. Because a man who's husband material is husband material from the beginning to the day he dies. Look at what she's doing. Her behavior is so sweet towards him, cooking, cleaning, faithful, loyal, giving him chance after chance. What does the Bible say in Proverbs 31 verse 10 through 12? A good woman, okay, does good to her husband all the days of his life, never does any wrong to him. But this goes the same way for men, ladies. A good man will do no harm to you every day of his life. He will be good to you day in, day out. You may have some miscommunication. You may misinterpret something, have a bad day. But the fights you have are going to be from little things like that. But when your fights and arguments come from Things like this, why do you have Tinder on your phone? Who's this girl? Why is she saved as sexy on your phone? When you have fights because you agree on different things, she didn't take the vaccine, neither did I, and this guy took the vaccine and they fought about it. This guy's all fearful about things on the news and war going on and all of this. She's very calm and relaxed and they were fighting about that. They had a fundamental rift in their values on politics and things of that nature, which caused arguments. That comes from incompatibility. So now she's arguing because there's red flags and she's had arguments too because they were incompatible. How can you bond with someone like that? If two, the, as the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? Let's continue on. So three red flags which disqualify this man as husband material. She should have walked away, but she chose to stay. So let's see what happened. She said, I'm not perfect, so I let these things pass. The reason why she's saying this is because she grew up in an abusive home. So she thought, okay, I'll, I'll give this guy some time. We were together for eight months. I had problems with my documents once and I had to go back to Italy for about a month. He said, he, he said we would get married when I go back to Poland because he didn't want anyone to take me away from him. There is no reason for him to say this unless he's unfaithful. Because your actions are showing me you're a loyal woman. So he should have no worry or doubt. But the thing about cheaters, monkey branches, is they think everybody's like them. So in a moment of uncertainty, they feel like you're going to betray them. That you can be stolen from them. Because they can be stolen from you. Because it's who they are. People pretend to project what's inside of them. The reason why you like to see the good in him, because there's good in you. But this is when you have to look past yourself, men and women watching, and assess that person for who they are, independently and objectively of what you think or feel. I'm dropping gems. Enjoy. So he's telling her, yeah, we're going to get married when I get back. Does that sound like he's getting married for the right reasons? He's not saying, we will, we will get married because I want you. I want you to be my wife. I want you to be the mother of my children. He's saying, we would get married when you get back from Poland because I don't want anyone to take you from. That sounds like insecurity. How can you make probably the most important decision in terms of relationships out of insecurity and expect it to have a positive outcome? He received me at the airport with flowers when I went back. Everything seemed perfect, but he never spoke about marriage again. Well, as I said earlier, confirm with his actions. They're not matching with what he says. Does he really want to marry you? Or is he just saying that to keep you there? 
Apart from some fights here and there because of jealousy by my side, your jealousy is justified. There is such a thing as righteous jealousy. You had a right to feel jealous because he was openly disrespecting you and you saw what he was doing with other women. So you, you had every right to feel jealous. Your jealousy was not coming from insecurities, Jessica. Your jealousies were coming from an honest place and a lack of future planning by his side. So other than jealousy by her side, she says, and a lack of future planning on his side, the relationship was good. Well, if there's no future planning on his side and you're bringing up marriage or bringing up engagement, because quite frankly, if you have everything right within about a year, year and a half, you can talk about these things, you can prepare. And if he's not planning for that as a man, why is he with you? If you're not courting with the intention to marry or spend your life with someone, what are you doing? You're wasting the other person's time. Sounds like he doesn't know what he wants. I finally had a phone. Uh, phone. I'm not even going to cut this out. I finally had a home, not a phone. I finally had a home and his family treated me like a daughter and we always had a wonderful time together. He even showed, she even showed me on the call some of the little drawings that his niece made um, for her because she would copy her, wear the same dresses as her. It was beautiful. So he comes from a very traditional home, but he's not a traditional man because he's deviated from it. He's been led astray. We had a wonderful time together with the family until one day I had to go to Spain to sing. Well, I'm in Spain, as she knows, and as you guys know. I was supposed to go back home. I'm in the south of Spain. The weather's been extremely hot recently. She said, I was supposed to go back home on Friday, but I did on Wednesday. I told him on the phone and he was not happy. Why would he not be happy to see you sooner? Unless he's doing something he shouldn't. He didn't want to pick me up at the airport because he had volleyball training. You're, you're going to see, for you guys watching, you're going to see now what happens with this now. In the end, he did pick me up, but after this, things were never the same. He was distant and didn't want to do things with me. Well, if he doesn't want to do things with you, he's doing them with someone else. He started saying he needed his space and I had to make friends to go out by myself like he did. He used to go out with his friends to drink without me and I didn't have friends there. He's a family man and traditional, but he's drinking with his buddies. No, he's not traditional at all. He sold you that story with a nice little bow on it because you found him handsome. You thought, okay, I'll give him chance after chance. Ladies, you have to be careful with this. You've got to protect your value. There's men out there that don't intend to make you their wife. They don't intend to have children with you. They just want to use you for comfort, for company, because they have low self-esteem. They're lonely. They're not real men. You need to get good at really breaking down a man's character. And don't be afraid to ask him tough questions about his past. How many women have you been with? What do you actually want? Tell me about your life. What is important to you? What are you looking for? And if he doesn't have any direction, he doesn't know where he's going, how could he possibly lead you or the children you have with him? Think about it. So he's going out with his friends drinking. Meanwhile, I was still learning Polish and I didn't have a job there yet. I started asking what was going on and suddenly there was a lot of weird things happening. Like he was suddenly going out a lot with co-workers to vegan restaurants. But we always made fun of vegans, so that was weird. Monkey branching is coming. It's coming. He would come home criticizing the co-workers on all of that, but he was with them until late. Being a hypocrite, he is. One day we had a huge fight and he told me to go be in Italy for a while because he needed space. I broke up with him, but then I regretted it and we came back together the same day. Making decisions based on emotion. He always had a sad story to explain things. I've got a spine tumor, I'm about to get fired. My parents were not talking to, his parents were not talking to him, that he was summoned to an army training, that there would be war in Poland, which by the way is all BS. There is no war in Poland. Poland is a NATO country. Nothing's gonna happen in Poland. And 
all of these lies about having cancer and that his parents weren't talking to him was all BS. This sounds like a weak man, he's groveling, he's complaining. I always ended up apologising for being too demanding and too jealous. Why? There's no need to apologise. But the reason why she does this, she grew up in an environment where her father always made her feel like she was wrong, which you're going to see at the end of the email. So now in her adulthood, when she has an argument or a discussion, she doesn't really know how to stand up for herself. So she ends up apologising because that's all she knows. But she's changing it now. Okay, I've toughened her up a little bit. So anyways, I went to Italy for one month because of my residence permit would come to an end. And he said there would be a flight controller strike, which never actually happened. And when I arrived to Italy, he sent me a message apologizing, saying that he would buy me a ticket back because it was a mistake to let me go and it never happened. See, for the guys listening, if you whine about things and you complain about things that are in your area and in your power to control, Initially, your girl's going to look at you and try and help you. It's in her nature to care for you. But if she starts to see that week after week, month after month, all you do is complain, bitch and cry instead of taking action to sort things out, she's going to see that you're a weak man. She's going to lose love and respect for you, which is actually what happened to her as well. She told me on the, on the coaching call how over time it kind of get a little bit annoying and she started to doubt if he could lead her, if he could really protect her. There's nothing new under the sun. It's always going to be this way. After I was in Italy, we almost didn't speak. He never picked up the phone and he said we would talk when I came back home and that he loved me. Well, it's one thing to say he loves you and there's one thing to show it. One day before I go back to Poland, he wrote me saying we should split. Interesting. First he says he loves you, now he wants to split. Okay. He said he was dead inside. Yeah, definitely a true statement. He's rotten to the core. This man is sick. Then he would go to the army and die in the war. So now he's doing a little bitch boy tactic to make you feel bad for him. I thought he was depressed and I spoke to his mother and he said he was not talking to them and they didn't know what was happening to him. Yeah, so first of all, he's saying his parents don't want anything to do with him, but really he's the one who's not talking to them. Liar, liar, pants on fire. It smells like Pinocchio, his nose is growing. I wanted to help him through all the problems and I begged, cried, I did all pathetic things. I thought he was in real trouble and I wanted to help and stay. But he was unbelievably decided though. He wanted the breakup. I was sleeping at the sofa and I left the bed for him because I thought he had a spine tumour. He's lying to you. It took me a while to put all my things into boxes and then we started talking and going on walks together and he said he would still talk about us and maybe there would be a light in the end of the tunnel. I had hope, so now he's just throwing you a bone. My plan was to stay in Warsaw somewhere, go no contact and wait for him to solve his personal problems. But then I did something. During the whole relationship, I always had his computer password, but I never invaded it. Well, Sometimes you have to invade. But I was so tormented by not knowing what was going on, I did it and it changed everything. Here's the evidence. I found out that besides having many other women he was flirting with, or even having casual relationships with, including a married woman he knew from his past, he had a serious relationship with his project manager, who was also a co-worker. She was the vegan one. That's why he was going to vegan restaurants. If you're ever in a commitment, ladies and gentlemen, and you're with someone, and all of a sudden their values do a 180 out of nowhere, their routine changes, their lifestyle seems to change, and it's not because of you or anyone close to them, someone else is in the background. So she's vegan. They went out together almost every day when I was working in Spain. And when I came back earlier, he told her tomorrow a truck is coming to take my ex's things away. And it was not true. I was coming back home from Spain and everything was okay. 
So that explains why when she went to Spain and she said, I'm coming back two days earlier on the Wednesday, he was all upset. Because, of course, he's living a double life. And it's, it's messing up his plans. <sighs> when I came back from Spain, I thought everything was okay. But he fell in love with her and finally decided to let me go because she was the chosen one to take my place. He lied to her and lied to me. Well, he's been like this before you met him, when he was with you, and now that you're gone from his life. Because as you mentioned, he was doing it with a married woman before. What sort of man does that? <sighs> he's lying to you, he's lying to her. He's going to keep doing it. While he was with her, building this relationship, he was still with the others as well. He also said horrible things about me to his friends and co-workers, that how crazy and jealous I was. Yeah, some narcissists like to do this, to kind of paint the image that you're the one who's the problem. So that nobody questions their behaviour. They turn everyone against you. He said, um, and, when he sent me, and when he sent me to Italy to have his space, he wrote, I sent Jessica away. Her things are here, but she is not. But I had fun with, I don't know what to call this woman, the vegan. Let's call her the vegan. But I had fun with the vegan. So those were text messages he left to his friends. So what sort of friends are kind of allowing this behaviour? Well, clearly, they're the types of men that think that there's nothing wrong with it, that are encouraging it. Corinthians 15.33, bad company corrupts good morals. Say it all the time. You become like the people you hang around. Ultimately, if he wasn't like those men, why would he interact with them? If I had a friend that was doing that to his girlfriend, I would never be his friend again. Because if he's going to betray his woman, he's going to betray his friend. Loyalty means nothing to these people. But of course, he can only be friends with people that are just as unfaithful as he is. The fact that he's telling his friends, oh yeah, she's, you know, she's bringing her stuff back, she's in Italy, but I had fun with a vegan though. What sort of sick man is this? And his friends say nothing. They don't try and reach out to you to tell you what's going on. They're just as bad as him. Remember, you can learn a lot by the company they keep. Ladies, if his family checks out and they're lovely people, look at his friends. Tell me about your friends. How are their relationships with women? What do they do? Look at what his friends are like. <sighs> he was never summoned to army training either. Instead, he was preparing a trip with the vegan and he invented his story to keep me waiting. Man, this guy's a storyteller, that's for sure. After I found out about everything, I left the house to a hotel. I booked a truck to send my things back to Italy and when I went there to get the boxes, I saw he bought a device to access his computer with his fingerprint. I'm back now to it in Italy for a week and I'm destroyed. Love him, I miss him, I don't understand what happened and I miss my life there, I miss his family. I know it sounds pathetic, but I just wanna go back home. I know it was not real, but I blame myself. I have so many confused feelings. I can't stop thinking about what I did wrong. I compare myself with this girl. She's shorter than me and I think, Maybe you wanted someone shorter. Maybe I pressured too much. You didn't pressure at all. And it's nothing to do with a girl. To her, to him, she's just someone else he's using for fun. Narcissists see people as objects that they can take, pick up and put down whenever it suits them. He's not building a relationship with her. He's just going to use her and then jump to the next and to the next. That's what these people do. I saw that all, all my suspicions were right, but yet I blame myself. I can't control it because of your childhood. This is what you need to change. I still seem as someone who needs to be rescued and I can't control this. This is coming from codependency. You tie your identity to other people. Your identity, your identity should only be tied to God. And only once a man is your husband, then you can tie your identity, identity to him, but he has to earn it. Not to some guy you're getting to know, and especially after you know what he did to you. There shouldn't be a reason for that. I can't see him in my head as he really is, and I can't see him as a bad person. I dream about him every night and I wake up crying. During our relationships, I doubted many times. Is he strong enough? Will he take care of our family? Can he lead? These are the things that women ask themselves, guys. 
Many times I felt like he was not courting me anymore and that he was not taking the lead, but I stayed. I tried to talk, I tried to solve things instead of jumping into someone else. Because you're a good woman, Jessica. You didn't do, you tried to communicate and solve it because you care, you value love, you value your relationship. But no amount of you valuing it is going to make him value it. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. You can be the perfect wife. Cook, clean, submit to him, be proud of him, love him, treat him with respect, be his woman. But if he is not a good man, if he's not righteous, if he doesn't see that, if he can't appreciate that, it's never going to mean anything. To the wrong man, it'll mean zero. Only a good man is going to appreciate that. I tried to talk, tried to solve things instead of jumping into someone else, but he didn't do that. He just discarded me. He never spoke to me about his doubts and problems. He just decided it was over for four months before breaking up and starting to look for a new person. I don't know how to go back to normal. I don't know if you have any advice to me. I see you usually talk to, to men. What hurts me is I still want him back and I know I shouldn't. I should be relieved for being out of this, but I wake up crying every day. I truly love him. How do I stop this? Well, we went on a coaching call. We sorted, we sorted a few things out, gave her some advice that's helping her. To all the women watching, I recommend you all check out Laurie Alexander. Her YouTube channel is The Transformed Wife. She has a very good and cheap book on Amazon talking about biblical womanhood, teaching ladies about relationships. So I really recommend you check it out. She's a very honorable woman. Send all my women there. So as you can see, Jessica's got a lot of codependency. But in a second email here, we're continuing on. This is gonna, said this was going to be a long one. She's going to give more details about her childhood. So you can see why she's the way she is. So I sent her an audio then. So she said, first of all, thank you for your answer and for the audio message. I can't explain how much it helped me already. Thank you. Yes, I'm interested in booking a coaching session with you. Let me know when you'll be available when we do it. And yes, you can make a video about my case and I would appreciate it. I'm watching many of your videos and it's helping me to see and accept reality. So it would be nice if my case can help other people who have been through similar situations. So I'm going to give you some more details. You were absolutely right about me turning the blind eye and being codependent. I'm aware of it and even know where it comes from. Well, that's the first step. To begin with, I didn't have a normal family. I had trouble with both my parents and the whole family's a mess. My parents were divorced and me and my brother went from one home to another. No peace, no stability. Living with my mother, my father, my aunts, my grandmothers. And our father is a very complicated person. He was abusive towards us and especially to me. He used to say women were inferior and evil and he made me copy the whole New Testament by hand and frequently beat me. So we spoke about this more in our call. Obviously her father's not a real Christian. And she mentioned that her father had some issues when he was younger, he would take LSD and drugs, which messed, messed him up. He's not a real man. But despite that, she's healing from it. She accepted that he, you know, he's damaged and that's just the way he was. But can you imagine this? A father saying to his own daughter that women are evil and inferior. What sort of man does that? But despite that, look how sweet she is. Look how much she's overcome. And she did everything for her ex, cooked, cleaned, took care of the home. She was a good woman. And tell, I'll tell you what, the guy who ends up marrying Jessica is going to be a very lucky man. As I mentioned at the, at the beginning, very beautiful, talented, traditional, feminine, Christian. Her, her values are on point. Hey, she's what, 29 now. So for any guys that are single, 30, 31, if you're, ha if you're very good looking, <laughs> send me a DM. Maybe I can put you in touch. So her father would say that women were inferior and evil and all of this had a bad impact on me. After jumping from religion to religion, I became an atheist and a feminist. She says, shame on me. This lasted until I was 24. Then I started going back to normal. Praise God that you came out of that situation. I forgave my father. I kept to myself. And I kept, I keep the things that he taught me that were good and left in the past the bad stuff. I don't have contact with him, but I keep good memories of him as a father. 
It takes a lot of courage to forgive someone like that. You did the right thing. You're a very strong woman. I also started going back to God. I abandoned all absurd revolutionary ideas and started to work on myself to be better. I'm now 29 and I'm still learning. I would like to have a family and to give my husband and children what I didn't have. A good, stable family and a home. And this is exactly what good women want and what good men want. That's the way it should be. That's how God made us, made men and women for each other, to build families, to build legacies, to create nations. It's a beautiful thing. This is what life is all about. All of these promiscuous men and women are going to die off. Nobody, everyone should stay away from them. She says, the thing is, I don't have a perfect history. I'm not, a, I'm not the girl with a good family, even though I've been working on myself to be good. So when I saw my ex going into a destructive path, I saw myself. When I saw him making mistakes like having Tinder on his phone, well, they weren't mistakes, they were choices. Different thing. You didn't get to choose to be born into a family where your dad said and did the things that he did to you. He chose to keep Tinder on his phone twice. Not a mistake. Because her father, her father always made her feel wrong. She said there was instances when if her brother would do something bad, she would always get the blame for it because she was a woman. And it got to the point where she just accepted it. And so she just took the abuse because she didn't know any better. She, so her father basically conditioned her to believe that anything bad that happens to it is her fault. So now her identity is tied to other people because she wasn't, ta she wasn't taught how to have her own one. So now when she's in a relationship with a man, even though there's red flags, she thinks, oh, bad behavior is normal. I'm used to it. I, I guess I'll keep finding a way. No. You need to avoid men like that completely. It's nothing to do with you. Your ex's behavior was about him. Nothing to do with you, Jessica. So... You say you don't have a perfect history, that you're not a good girl with a good family. You didn't get to choose your family, but you get to choose the family that comes from you. So you've prepared to be a wife and a mother, which is great. You just need to find a man that is prepared for fatherhood and husbandship. What I would recommend you do is, next guy you start dating, send him my book. Say, you want to be a good man? Read Christian's book. All the fundamentals are there. My entire book teaches men from the beginning to the end, how to meet the right woman, how to be the right man, uh, and how to maintain a healthy relationship with godly values. Next boyfriend you have, next guy you start dating, send him, send him to my book, send him to my content. It might change his values. And then that man will be ready to lead you. So you need to find a man who has prepared for fatherhood and husbandship, or at the very least is open to it. Because as a woman, you can't teach a man how to be a man. But again, you didn't choose your family. So you shouldn't feel guilty for that. But again, you can choose the one that you create. But it requires a good father for your children, a good husband for you. Because you, you, you will be a good wife. You will be a good mother. But it all depends on the quality of man you choose. You are responsible for that. Now that you've been through this experience, you don't want this to happen again. You've got to be very cautious now. So, when I saw him making mistakes like having Tinder on his phone, not a mistake, I thought, well, I'm not perfect either. I'm learning and he's learning, something like this. Doesn't excuse his behavior. I didn't know everything was a lie though. I thought he was just making mistakes. It was still the beginning and it seemed to me back then that he was much better than me. He had such a beautiful family and it seemed like he was closer to God than I was. And that wasn't true either. When he sent me to Italy because he needed space, he said he would work on himself and go to have confession with a priest, but he didn't do it. Instead, he went out with a vegan. <laughs> and in our last argument, he said he doesn't even believe in God. Well, there you go. Traditional values come from faith as I say all the time. And if a man is not right with God, the only thing holding him accountable are his emotions, his own knowledge. And this man is a self, has a selfish heart. Nobody wants to be with a selfish person because they can't love others. They can't be genuine. Everything with them is about ego and pride. 
He was never going to tell you his problems or things he was going through because for him, that would be weakness. Instead of being vulnerable and open to you, building a bond. Because he's too afraid to do that because he's a coward. Because really, selfish people are weak. And they pretend they're strong, but they're not. They're pathetic. That's what they are. And you, just because he had a good family doesn't mean he was really a part of them. He wanted nothing to do with them. He was just a bad apple. And he was led astray by his bad friends as well. But very, very narcissistic with what he did to you. No empathy, no sympathy. She even mentioned on the coaching call that when they would, uh, uh, when they would communicate about things, and when she tried to communicate about what, when he did something she didn't like, he would take it as an offence, as an attack. Instead of sitting there, okay, I get where you're coming from and actually following through and changing his behaviour. Because he's with his ego. Narcissists perceive anything as an attack. Either you're with them or against them. Because they can't take const constructive criticism. Because they think they're perfect. And they create this image in their head that they are this um, spotless creature. And the moment you point the finger at them and call out something bad about them, they see you as an enemy. Because they're, they're children. They have no emotional intelligence. So they don't know any better. But this is why you can't have a relationship with such an individual. It's impossible. They're selfish. They can't, they can't have a, a, a loyal commitment to you. It's impossible. They're only loyal to themselves. And even then they betray their own, their own so-called morals to go and do what they want when it suits them. So really they're just loyal to the emotions they feel in the moment. So he doesn't even believe in God and in the end of the relationship he was all talking about how empty he was feeling and the fire in his heart was dead. But I remembered myself and how empty I felt when I was lost in life. I thought he was going through something similar. You were going through that when you were a child, Jessica. This man's 31 years old. He's not a kid anymore. He should know better. What was he doing with throughout his 20s? Was he not building himself up as a man? He had a decade to set himself up. And he wasted it. Yeah, of course he's going to feel dead inside. You're way better than him, honey. That's the truth. And I thought he was going through something similar. He even cried about this. And I thought he was in real trouble like I was once. We had many arguments about how I saw things in black and white. And he thought that everything was grey. And that was another huge red flag, but I was already late in the relationship. Exactly. And she's just like me in that sense. And most of you, truth is black and white. Things are this way or that way. That's it. And if you don't like it, there's something you need to change. You look at things objectively. Truth is objective. Male or female, day and night, tall or short, happy and sad. Some things are great, but fundamentals, values, truth is black and white. Relationships, there's grey in communication misunderstanding, but on compatibility, on chemistry, on loyalty, on love, it's objective. It's black and white. Truth is black and white. So if she's someone like me and she sees things as black and white because they are, and then you, you're dating this weak emotional man who's, who believes in nothing and thinks that think everything's grey, yeah, of course it's not going to work. She said, and that was another huge red flag. I remembered myself how meaningless everything was when I believed nothing and how confusing it was to live with moral, moral relativism. But I became happier when I went back to God and started to see reality and have moral principles. And that's exactly why things are black and white. Amen. But my ex always said how he envied how happy and positive I was. That's remember, narcissists are jealous of everyone because they, they don't have a personality. They just copy paste people. I thought he was similar in a situation as I've been and he needed help. Yeah, there was no reason for him to envy you. How can you envy someone you love? You should be in, ad, admire them. You should be like, wow, I love this person. I'm so lucky to have them. Envy? Who envies anyone? That's weak. But he never admitted anything, and the day I left the house, which was the day I read his messages, I told him I knew everything. He said 
we would be talking about us. So I said, let's talk, let's talk today because tomorrow I'm leaving. And I asked him to tell me the truth. And he said that there was nothing to tell. He never cheated and he didn't have anyone, but I'd already read the messages. I gave him details about his affairs and conversations, but he denied it until the end. Then he realized I had read the messages and he got upset for it. <laughs> he still thinks he didn't cheat and I don't know how because he's a narcissist and he's convincing himself that he's right in his own mind to make himself feel better. But do you know what the, the reap what you sow, the karma, how some people say it is for a narcissist, is that they can never find love. He will look back five, 10 years from now and realize that you were probably the only woman that will ever have truly loved him. And he lost that chance. Because narcissists, because of the way they are and they don't want to change, they will never find someone that will actually care about them that they can actually bond with because they're incapable of doing it. They're almost cursed to never find love but keep searching it. That's going to be his life unless he picks up a Bible or goes to therapy. Really, he needs both. And uh, yeah, she says, oh, what a coincidence that you are half Polish. I love Poland. Hope I can go back there someday. Again, thank you so much for your attention. It was really nice to hear your message. Anyways. Yeah, so that's the end of her situation, guys. This is exactly what happened to Jessica. Let that be a lesson to all of you. Ladies, you are responsible for the quality of man that you choose. Don't turn a blind eye to red, red flags because you find the guy attractive. Vet his character, vet his background. Ask quality questions, dig deep into who he is. You have a right to know. If you are going to spend your life with someone, you have a right to know who they are. If not, what is the point of being with them? Are you gonna share your life with someone who's keeping secrets, who's a stranger, who's holding back? And you're gonna have children with them? You're gonna create life with them? And you don't even have a proper relationship with your spouse? That's not a way to live. And then you get idiots blaming marriage. Oh, it's marriage doesn't work. No, you're marrying the wrong people. Stop doing it, okay? Get yourself right, make sure you're the right person and then choose the right person for you. It's that simple, okay? With that said, hope you'll have a wonderful day. And for anybody, and for the ladies listening, if you have a similar situation, a success story, a, a bad one, whatever happens to be, and you believe that men and women watching can learn from it, send me an email and I'll make a video about it. With that said, hope you'll have a wonderful day. God bless all of you and your families.